On this episode of Gadget, stay connected everywhere, all the time, at broadband speeds, wirelessly. And no, it's not Wi-Fi. Sprint's mobile broadband service, coming up on Gadget. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, a sanctuary for you to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. That's the California province of the Jesuits, a religious order of the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the computer lab at Most Holy Trinity Church in San Jose, California. Now we're going to start off this week with an email that we received from Sarah in Las Vegas who writes, I've noticed that the credits at the end of your show are always changing and that aside from you, no one ever seems to have the same job twice. Exactly how many people do you have working on Gadget? And if it's just you, why do you keep saying we? Well, Sarah, first of all, thank you for watching the show all the way to the credits. Uh, but the answer for how many people work on Gadget is a little bit more complicated than 1, 2, or 12. You see, I'm the only one that works full-time on Gadget, and even me, this is more of a hobby. All the other people, the hosts, the the guest technicians, the guest camera people have come and gone. They've helped as they've had time, and then they've moved on. It's, it's a community project. So when I say we, I really mean we in the community royal sense. We who have put this together to bring it to you. But thanks for the question. Please keep them coming. Let's get on to the tech. This week, we're taking a look at the mobile broadband service from Sprint. Now, Mobile service on your mobile phone isn't something new. I mean, I was connecting my laptop up to a Samsung 8500 way back when, and uh, I got less than dial-up speeds, but hey, it was pretty cool to be connected anywhere I went. Sprint service is unique in the speeds that they claim they can reach. They claim that their 3G EVDO carrier network can deliver 700 kilobits per second to 1.4 megabits per second in their Revision A upgraded areas, and 400 kilobits to 700 kilobits per second everywhere else. Now, this is a far cry from the less than dial-up that I got on my 8500. But the question is, how is it going to work? Now, Sprint sent me a Syria, Sierra Wireless AirCard 595, their PC card device with an upgraded antenna, and gave me unlimited service to test out their claims of speed and accessibility. This card is supposed to have increased signal sensitivity compared to prior versions, and it has a port for an external antenna. We didn't get the chance to test the antenna, but we can only guess that it would have greatly improved our speeds indoor and in the car. Setup was really simple. You install the software, you plug in the card, and you enter in the authorization code to activate the service. I was ready to test the service within five minutes of receiving it. I decided to take the card on a road trip to test out the claims of accessibility and speed. I drove around California and Nevada just to see what would happen when I took the card on the go. I expected to experience spotty service and a less than overwhelming 3G experience. Driving through Sacramento, Fremont, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and everywhere in between, I took some benchmarks using the flash client at dslreports.com. The results, quite simply, blew me away. There was only one spot deep in the mountains above Sacramento that I was unable to get any signal for a prolonged period of time. There were also a few spots where the bandwidth fell to the double digits, but most of the benchmarks came in at well over 200k up and 200k down. Predictably, the best speeds were recorded while I was in the boundaries of major cities such as San Francisco, Los Angeles, or Las Vegas. The speed near these locations hovered near the 900 500 download upload speed. The best connection I recorded during the testing period was at a noodle house here in San Jose, where I received 1400k down and 850k up consistently over several hours of usage. 
With this speed, I was able to simultaneously surf the web, check email, download episodes of DLTV, and even watch smooth streaming video from my Slingbox in Las Vegas while uploading content for the techstop.net. The final test that I ran probably had to be running afoul of some of California's traffic laws. I plugged the Sprint wireless broadband enabled laptop into my car stereo and started a streaming audio session from the BBC. Driving between the San Francisco Bay Area, Applegate, and Los Angeles, I was able to keep the stream going the entire time. I only lost it for three times for about two minutes each. During the same time as the stream played, I managed to download over a gigabyte of data. Of course, the streaming player has buffering that possibly smoothed out any drops in connectivity, but the overall dependability and speed of the network was made clear. Furthermore, when I did lose my connection on the rare occasion, I discovered that the audio stream recovered and the downloads resumed promptly once the connection was reestablished. This isn't to say that the Sprint mobile broadband service is perfect. You see, the downside of the connection is, well, latency. I recorded an average of 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds of latency, even when the speed benchmarks were above the 1 megabit per second level. Using non-sprint servers for the benchmark testing would only increase the latency between 20 to 30 percent. Now, this doesn't matter to casual surfers or those who are just looking to check their email and occasionally download a file, but the high latency pretty much rules out any standard VoIP client or online gaming if you want to stay competitive. You could do it, but it would be a pretty frustrating experience. So a few final thoughts about the Sprint mobile broadband service. This is cool. But the price is a bit steep. It starts at $60 a month with a one-year contract if you are already a Sprint subscriber. If you're not a Sprint subscriber, the price jumps up to $80 a month for a one-year contract or $60 a month if you take a two-year contract. With DSL in the $10 to $50 range, that is a little bit pricey, but you have to consider the fact that this is mobile and actually works pretty dang well for, for what it is. Now, who is this for? Mobile users who are uncomfortable using Wi-Fi or who are going to be in areas where Wi-Fi doesn't exist as ubiquitously as it does in the cities. One of the nice things about using a service like this is, unlike Wi-Fi, in which even WPA is hackable and can be attacked by man-in-the-middle attacks, this is pretty much secure. When you connect using this, it's just you. It's not really shared bandwidth. And uh, you can be assured that the communications that are taking place over your link are not going to be spied upon or tapped into by any nosy hackers. Using Sprint's service cuts that security threat, and it might be worth the peace of mind for a, a mobile worker to, to pay the $60 to $80 a month for the service. Now, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget, but if you'd like to learn more about the Sprint service or to read up the full article, you can go to www.thetechstop.net, click on the Gadget tab, and you can read the full article and find out a bit more information about the Sprint mobile broadband service. If you want to write us to talk about this episode or maybe to suggest future products for us to review, you can reach us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Now, I've been your host, Robert Balliser, and this has been the Computer Lab at Most Holy Trinity Church in San Jose, California. I want to remind you that there's no Uber Geek without you. Take care. <laughs>